satisfaction, and a euphoria that can only be explained as oneness with the natural world. Whoa. Better here? August 22nd. Right, and August 11th. August 11th. Okay, so, where are we and what is this? Yep, this is that. On We're on CCTV. Who was that? That was Brother R.A., the brother with a lot to say each and every day. And um, <clears throat> what are we talking about? Where are we? What lifestyle are we dealing in? Hmm. I'm just wondering. Do you know who you are and where you are in this? Where are you in that? Are you capable of standing on the surface of the earth. That's what I just did for you. And just so that you know, those that can handle standing still or being still, no movement, and allow yourself to enter yourself and go deep within. All right, enough of the metaphysical deep conversation. Udi yada yada ya. <laughs> so, where did I end last week? We were uh, on the air and I got cut off as usual dealing with blah blah blah. But you know, to get to this particular page of Brother R.A., you hit the YouTube button and the YouTube button brings you here and um, since I'm sharing so much knowledge and information and there was something I wish to share with you last week uh, this was a particular picture that didn't come up for me and um, Let's see if we can make it a little bit larger for your screen. This is that Minuteman individual and in juxtaposition to uh, the black man photograph. <clears throat> yeah. What is the black man's image in United Snakes of America? Well, this is a version of one black man that we're getting ready to observe on Thanksgiving. This melanin dominant red man hailing the heavens in front of the Museum of Fine Arts. And that is art. A red man on the horse, and we're going to make him an icon in front of the Museum of Fine Arts. 
And I think it's an insult to have the red man on the Massachusetts state flag and in front of the Museum of Fine Arts after taking his land and <clears throat> this is very distraught and disturbing for me, especially when, here, let me share just a little bit of something, something, as the pictures are going to deviate. This is my college roommate, Dave Dotton, shooting the jump shot. Uh, you see the cannons, the Minutemen. The cannons represent, oh, the British are coming. The British are coming. Old England is invading New England. And we have the Minutemen soldiers. But then we have, what, the Vietnam soldier kneeling... So, in juxtaposition, we have the Minuteman standing, holding his gun. I'm ready for war! We have the cannons out in Cambridge. There's the red man in front of the Museum of Fine Arts. Here's the black man here. armored up and ready for war. I am... And so... Hmm. Let's move along. I ain't got too much time. I have to... Oh, did I make reference to... the cement behind my house? And this is a picture of what the house looked like with out the cement, but that's a whole nother story. And did I not share with you last week an, another statue? Uh, the wolf feeding the babies? Hmm. And then also here in the intellectual mecca of the world, we're talking about, hey, you can get $1,100 at the sperm bank. I wonder if that's still going on. Hmm. Genetic engineering. And talking about genetic engineering and who we are as melanin-dominant people, Here we go. What? Happy Thanksgiving. And let's just zoom in a little bit on this so we can read that. Transforming the Legacy. Yes, a commemoration of the presidential apology to the survivors of the United Snakes Public Health service syphilis study. A celebration of the launch of the Tuskegee University Center for Bioethics in Research and Healthcare. So, wait a minute, did was there an experiment where they gave black men syphilis? And were they warriors too? Happy thanks taken. Let's go to church. All right, get to the dial. You don't have time. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's... Just go to the next picture. Um, 
just happy thanks taking. This is a postcard of four men hanging from a tree. But, you know, in every Negro, there's a potential black man. The sight of the great elm. Here, put your glasses on, R.A., you can't read. That says, here the Sons of Liberty assembled. Here, Jesse Lee, a Methodist pioneer, preached in 1790. The landmark of the common, the elm blew down in 1876. So we're talking about a hanging tree, and there's a placard in the Boston common of where they hung niggas, and they called it the Great Elm. I'm just sharing happy Thanksgiving knowledge and information. You know, do you know where you are? Actually, let's read this one here too. The Great Elm commemorates the Great Elm that was already sizable in the 17th century, used for hanging. Its destruction in a storm in 1876 occasioned widespread mourning. And, hmm, okay, I got to get ready to read ending 360. It's 112 into the show. And then I'm going to conclude the show with some standing. But as that's up, As a black mentor, a black thinking man, I have to share. Okay, so I went to high school. I made reference to the particular accolades that I, quote unquote, ascertained. And this is me graduating getting my high school diploma, and the only other ascertaining accolade that I achieved was Certificate of License, Gospel Ministry, signed by Reverend Melvin G. Brown. And all you have to do to become a reverend is give your initial sermon. So I gave my initial sermon and became licensed. And the only other accolade, I'm going to share a few different pictures. Y'all have to, okay, so that's my certificate of license. This is my Roxbury Tai Chi Academy, and that's what I opened the show with, a standing exercise. And this is me standing behind my teacher, and these were other students in the particular class at that time. So, I am, and you did happen to see these particular pictures here. Okay, the Barbie, the black women with the blonde hair, and I'm still seeking the mother of my child. And I told you about the cement and how they put that there, but that's a whole nother issue. Um, okay, so I ended last week's show talking about the Hunger Games, and as a mentor, talking about ascertaining particular consciousness, I would definitely have every male watch Knock Knock. Keanu Reeves was in this movie. He executive produced it. And this is about two females. He lives out in the suburbs, you know, 
All the neighbors are gone for vacation. The cab drops off these two white females in front of his house. He's an architect. It's Father's Day. He didn't get to go with his family because he had to get some work done for himself trying to earn dead slaveholders. And these two females say, oh, the cab dropped us off in the wrong spot. Sir, can we come in and use your phone and... They're soaking wet and so on and so forth. And he ends up tied up by them. And I, as Father Nature, have to acknowledge that I inbred and created an albino child. And this knock-knock shows the distinction between men and women or <clears throat> females. And I would love to get the opportunity to find a female to give her perspective of knock-knock. But... He got seduced by the two young females that claimed they were adults and she's on him, riding him, beating him up. Daddy, why did you have sex with me in my rearing years? She's beat, he's tied up on the bed and boom, boom, boom. I, as Father Nature, have to acknowledge that Women feel this way about men. And men abuse them. And we haven't taken the time to revere the woman. All big heads come out of... And what are we getting ready to observe? Thanks, taking and the x mess, the birth of Jesus Christ. Why is he being revered and not the woman? Who was Jesus' mother? Fuck Jesus Christ. Where is the woman? Oh, that's anti-Semitic. That's anti-Christian. You can't say fuck Jesus Christ, all right? What's wrong with you? What kind of mentor are you? No. Knock, knock. We have to acknowledge who we are and where we are in our life and in understanding our greatness as divine energy. I mean, what is the, uh, hmm. I just wish to share this shot with you real quick. Look at, what? Now, imagine Keanu Reeves is me. A black man in that situation and two white females come to my door, seduce me, I have sex with them, and then they end up saying, oh, well, we're not of legal age. Go ahead, call the police. I have a story to tell them. For young black men, be careful of where you stick your dick. I watched Angela Davis, and what was Angela's comment? And she did the opening, and what is it? Ha! Huh. Leo Branton, attorney, there are no rights a black person has that a white person is bound to respect. Hmm. And Glory, I couldn't even watch Glory because I don't really like Morgan Freeman. What was that? I showed something about Shaw earlier. And who is Shaw dealing with the Civil War 
and they're just walking ahead and getting shot at. The Confederates versus the Union, the South versus the North. Do you know who you are and where you stand in this life? Are you a divine energy? Are you tapping in to who you are? So, the least among you, OMG, I told you I was a reverend. Reverend Richard. And this is a story, the least among you. Leaders are not chosen, they're called. Louis Gossett and... William Devane. William was a black man that went to a cemetery, okay, a seminary, out in L.A., and what? Racism in 1964, he's the first black man to go to a white seminary? And how did they treat this black man desiring to become a pastor? <sighs> Pastors lead. Wait a minute. Is it the sheep? Wait a minute. Shaw. Keep marching. Just walk. Get shot. Let cannon shoot you. <sighs> okay. Nerve. That was rather interesting. Teenage movie, Nerve. I have the nerve to be an unapologetically melanin-dominant black motherfucker. To admit, this movie here, what? Which one was it? Oh. Keanu, oh, here we go. Knock, knock. Let's put these down. Let's get organized. Knock, knock, as a mentor, as for males, specifically young black men. What did this woman say? Oh, didn't you have, haven't you ever desired a menage a trois? You know, that means two males and one female, or two females and one male. And as I go deep within myself and discovering who I am, you know, single, never married, 57, no kids, and I'm still looking for the mother of my child, but is she going to be on the same wavelength and understand who I am and what I'm about? Will she have nerve? Will she have honor? Will she be able, last week I said something about more white women can see themselves as a goddess than black women. No, no, you, I can't be a goddess. I got to serve Jesus fucking Christ. No, every big head on the planet came out of your pussy first, black woman. I have nerve to say that. Thanks taking. Thanks for taking the land. Thanks for taking my mind. Thanks for mind fucking me. Thanks for having me be a dumbass. This is what? The 21st century? The 19th year? And we're still dumbing ourselves down? All right, calm down. Knock, knock. Um, you got to read the Dow. Free Angela. Glory, I couldn't watch Morgan Freeman. I'm really not happy with black men continuing to take that subservient role to show how we were hung or how we were dealt with in these past 400 years. Where is the consciousness and the divinity of who we are as individuals? Where's our greatness? Do we see ourselves as divine? Can we bring ourselves to a particular level of consciousness and understand, oh, I am wonderful.
I am great. I'm magnificent. I'm all of this. I'm all of that. Do we even eat the right foods? That's the question. Can we ascertain our cognizance by drinking and eating their nonsense? So, let's go back to the pictures. I'm sorry, I'm a divergent. I don't fit into any particular category. I'm that different. Shaq's comedy, that was kind of lacking. I'll just leave it at that. And now, am I a mechanic? Am I the mechanic going into the mindset and readjusting our thinking? Okay, so in readjusting our thinking, okay, I dealt with Angela Davis. Um, she's not stupid. She did her own introduction and... In her case, huh? And Leo Brandon says, eyewitness testimony is the most unreliable you'll ever get. And the white man sitting, that woman right there, Angela Davis. And he pointed to the other sister that had an afro that wasn't Angela Davis. So he. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Okay. So, intellectual like this. If you're black, you don't wonder why she fled. Hmm. She fled white men chasing her. Hmm. You only wonder why she allowed herself to be caught. Her opening statement was fantastic. Uh, absurd and male chauvinistic. That's what she said. She talked about this society being male chauvinistic. Hmm. Why did I dream of using young white girl to start my case against the public? Her headset. Hmm. Hanging trees. Okay, I showed all that stuff. Oh, my God. I have to throw this in there. I watched some football Saturday. I felt so sorry for the two black coaches of Navy getting their ass beat by Notre Dame. And thinking about colleges, all these colleges were established around the hanging tree time. Or anything prior to 19... 60, 1950, anything prior to that, 1700s, 1800s, early 1900s. Where's my picture of the Agassiz School? Agassiz School, I'm sorry, Louis Agassiz, she's, what, not Louis Agassiz, excuse me. Miss Agassiz started Radcliffe because the white male chauvinists weren't allowing the white women to attend school with them. Hmm. And so these two black coaches, they got their ass beat by Notre Dame. Mm, mm, mm. When did colleges start? You still got to read the Dow and do some standing. Oh, and I need, I wanted to show Plymouth Rock. I don't have that picture up. Um, Plymouth Rock. Landed on us. We did not land on Plymouth Rock. And dealing with Harvard and MIT, I do believe that all of the observatories Harvard and MIT have, because they only make a contribution for property tax. Can I just make a contribution for property tax? All the property that Harvard and MIT own, and they just make a contribution to the city. 
So all the observatories should be open to the public. So folks can go in and look at who they are and find themselves in... <clears throat> Look at the stars and understand and see our greatness. You know what I'm saying? So, hmm, yeah, let me show you this too. Talking about mentors, let's share these mentors. These are my mentors' pictures in my living room. So, how great are you? I talked about mechanic and me being that mechanic. Can I be a Jason Statham? What was his name in that movie, Bishop? And how does a bishop move diagonally or slanted? Am I divergently slanted? Hmm. I, his character, Bishop, says, I spent my whole life setting up people to die. But he saved this one woman, so he says, I set you up to live. Woman, those that hurt the most have the ability to heal the most. This is one of the ancients. New paths for our character. Is your chemistry right? Dangerous and exotic stunts. He's talking, this is the filmmaker talking about making the movie of mechanics. Mechanic. And he talks about, oh, dangerous and exotic stunts. And then the score, the sound of the movie. It makes people more interested. And they're not even intellectually aware. Are you still being mind fucked by the media? Oh, happy Thanksgiving. All right. And Wilma, DJ Wilma, I have to give props to you. I listen to... <laughs> and why do I keep fucking with you? Hmm. How have I matured? Matured. I have my list of, quote unquote, 50 women I had sex with. And, yeah, I thought about having a menage a trois. And, yeah, I sucked a man's dick at one point in my life. Cuddled into him and all of that. But that's not the path that I chose. And do I have that much more self-esteem and self-respect? 57, single, never married, no kids. Guess I won't have that menage a trois because I'm not finding the type of woman I really need to understand and understand the various aspects of who I am as a black man. The syphilis study, the sperm bank, hanging inside every black man Every Negro has the potential to be a black man. All right, you did enough. Oh, you fucked up. You didn't even... Okay, here we go. We're reading the Tao now. Then we're going to go ahead and do some standing for the last five or six minutes, which is going to be a preparation for next week because I am not talking. I'm not, I'm showing stillness. I open the show tapping in to my divine energies and tapping in to my greatness and understanding who I am as a magnificent individual and understanding all aspects of who I am and understanding my ancestors, <clears throat> they built 
such edifice that the square at the base, the all-seeing eye at the top, the uh, shadow on one side, the nadar side, the sunshine side, and this is my greatness. So let's go into 360, 135 into the show in 30 seconds, ending 360, a shadow edge is never on the edge. The shadow edge is never on the edge. Is that going to come up? Where is the edge? Okay, so... A shadow edge is never on the edge. The time... To contemplate the ending is before the ending. Five days left to this year. There will be an ending and there will be a new beginning. That is Tao. If you look at a vase by a window and examine what makes it appear round, you will see a shadow on it. That is the shadow edge. It is the darkest shadow on that face. Does that make sense? If you look at a vase by a window and examine what makes it appear round, you'll see a shadow on it. That is the shadow edge. It is the darkest shadow on that face. It is never on the edge. The main light source strikes the vase on one side and reflected light comes from the other. In the same way that the shadow edge which establishes the roundness of an object to our eyes is never at the edge, so too should we consider limits and endings before we reach them. We cannot do this without limits and endings. They bring definition to our endeavors, but if we are to use them to our advantage, we have to plan how to meet them. For those who follow Tao, those who can accommodate endings gracefully, are among the most admired. In the past, emperors, scholars, holy people, or others who were fully in touch with themselves could know the moment of their deaths while they were still vital. They wrote farewell poems. Such people know how to consider endings before they reach them. Therefore, there are no regrets or lingering fragmentations I'm sorry, no lingering ramifications once they passed. 
the purity of the next cycle was ensured. Let's move on to purity. 361 of Dang Ming Dao's 365 Dao three daily meditations. Purity is light. We forget purity too much. We make compromises with our hygiene in the name of expediency. We allow our mountains and seashores to be polluted for the sake of the marketplace. We allow our minds to be sullied with frivolous entertainment. War is thought to be a viable option. Principle is considered a negotiable quality. Our children are victimized by strangers and the obscenity is considered a valid subject for art. Where is the purity in our lives? We marry, we divorce, we don't care whom we hurt in life. We think loyalty is a charming but meaningless virtue. We sacrifice the values of our youth to purchase the glory of our later years. Where is the purity in our lives? We think that if we can triumph in one golden moment, that will dissolve all other filth we preoccupy ourselves with. We uphold the greatness of athletes who want to have that one moment of triumph. We loud, L-A-U, we loud the battlefield hero as the redeemer of our guilt over the horror of war. We have fostered madmen who think that shooting a gun, hunting down animals, committing suicide, or lashing prostitutes in the street is their means of purity. Where is the purity in our lives? We seek purity. It may not be easy. It may not be common. But it is the one state that we can attain that is without Compromise. Mm, mm, mm. Purity from the Tao. Now, let's move back to after we read purity, we're supposed to read cycle 66. I let my chi read, lead me to 66 cycles. Time is running out. I ran my mouth too damn much. But cycles, 44 minutes into the show, page 66. Two six is the circle at the bottom of the stem cycles. Dawn is a shimmering 
of the horizon. Dusk is a settling of the sky. Dawn and dusk together represent a me the measure of a day. When the sun rises, the moon sets. When the moon rises, the sun sets. This represents the cycle of existence. For without such alternation, the power of the universe could not be generated. When the sun reaches its zenith, it will inevitably begin its descent toward its nadar. All events, including our own plans and activities, follow the same pattern. It is wisdom to know the cycles of life and where any particular circumstance that we are involved in stands on the curve. If we want to perpetuate something, we should join it to new growth, to compound our progress. If we want to destroy something, We need only lead it to its extreme. For all things decline after their zenith. All too often people express uncertainty about where they stand in life. It's important to examine both the short range and the long range. If you want to go far in a decade, you have to go far each year. If you want to go far each year, you have to make sure that you do something significant each day. Use the cycles of life to establish a measure to your life. And then arrange your plans according to the units that you have chosen. Then there will be no fear of not knowing your own progress. And I will go ahead and read returning. Oh, shit, there's so much more to read. Fuck me. Ten minutes left. I need to, I'll read returning and then stand for whatever left. And then next week, I'm going to stand the whole 57 minutes just to show me getting rooted, centered, and grounded within myself, understanding my divinity, returning, 67, angles against lavender sky, flung, Far across heaven's vault, unfettered, swallows, circle back to the nest. Swallows are famous for the daring speed and unpredictable paths that they take in flight. Yet, no matter how far they fly, they circle back to their nest. The idea of returning is significant for all of us. We must work, explore, travel, and make our achievements in life. No matter how much we strain and how wide we wander, we all need some loadsome, lodestone, L-O-D-E-S-S-T-O-N, we all need some lodestone, some center from which to operate. For some of us, this is a place, a home. For others, it is merely withdrawal into our own hearts. Followers of Tao believe that there is a core spirit to each of us 
should return. This core, this core spirit is increasingly obscured by our own thoughts and the complexity of civilization. All education, while a necessary evil, is a strain upon the primal soul. Therefore, returning is a process of simplification that throws off the unnecessary problems of socialization. One gradually peels back the layers and makes one's way back to the unsullied, pure inner person. The time to do this is long, and one needs a great deal of guidance and self-cultivation to achieve it. But until one returns to the natural state, one cannot truly hope to be one with Tao. I didn't hit my pipe today. I've just been dealing. I dealt with everything. Come on. Damn you. Thank you. Notice I'm wearing my water shoes. I'm tucking my pelvis, straightening my spine, relaxing my shoulders. As you can see, I'm wearing balanced life, light, light as a feather, light as a beaming light. I'm coming deep within myself. I'm bringing denotative, connotative, and absolute abstract energies into myself.
57 minutes of this next week. I will be spending my thanks taking, going deep within myself. Family time is important, but you must spend time with yourself regularly. Daily do things that mean something that help you reach your purity. You're not compromised. Thank you for watching. Go to ccae.org to register.